We missed the anniversary, Kyle. You're supposed to keep me keyed in on serious dates. You know my mind is in the clouds. Oftentimes, Kyle, this one's on you. Darby cast, Wild Card Friday. Kyle and I, we were just talking about a special anniversary. Happens once a year, as most anniversaries do. And what was that? The anniversary of the bulldozer rampage. Oof. Incredible, right? Some of you immediately started smiling upon hearing bulldozer rampage, also known as the killdozer. Pretty underreported piece of American history that I'm happy to share with you today. We're going to do a little bit of a hero spotlight, and sure, we could talk about the nonsense going on at the Treasury Department with Janet Yellen trying to redefine the word recession. We could talk about more information being slowly trickled to the population about how the vaccine may have given them AIDS. That's a real treat, isn't it? Vaccine-induced AIDS, Fauci AIDS, VADES, or if it's Fauci AIDS, FADES. But no, we're going to talk about Marvin Heemeyer, the architect of one of the most powerful, physical, violent acts of rebellion in recent American history. There's this fella, he ran a muffler shop and local politicians were breathing down his neck and saying, you suck, Marv, not okay. You don't mess with the guy who's doing cool muffler stuff. Boy, you don't do that. I often think to myself, more often than most people would find appropriate, I wonder how Marv would have dealt with all the COVID nonsense. If the government had told Marv, you got to shut down your muffler shop and wear a mask, we're not looking at a bulldozer rampage. We're looking at something far more serious than that. And we're going to talk about what that might look like a little bit later. But let's talk about the facts first. This dude who was skilled at more things than most people are, he has a big skill set, had a big skill set. Check that. Marv is no longer with us. It was a final trip. He welded steel and concrete around the frame of a 50-ton piece of heavy machinery that was like not your traditional bulldozer, but I'm going to have Kyle link the video because if a picture says a thousand words, this video that will be linked, Kyle, can I count on you to just put a link in the description? You have messed that up before, and that's the reason you're an unpaid intern. You have not earned a paycheck. Um, you mess up enough to where it's definitely not time for you to start making money doing what you're doing. But like, I'm glad you've stuck around because you know the experience is uh, you're not going to get this working at Carl's Jr. So just link the fucking video is what I'm trying to say. But this dude, he had just had it up to here. And if you could only see how high my hand was right now, Boy, I'll tell you what, he'd had it with the low to medium intelligence career bureaucrats that wanted to slap regulations on his muffler shop, spouting off about catalytic converters and safety guidelines. And it's like, don't bring that bullshit into Marv's business. Okay. And he took a stand. He used his welding skills and... He also rigged cameras to the bulldozer to make sure he could see because he welded himself in a fortress where there were no windows because he knew that corrupt government officials would try to stop him using law enforcement who didn't know any better. They didn't know that Marv was actually a really good dude. And that speaks to the concept of get to know your neighbors, right, Kyle? So he demolished a lot of buildings, this guy, Marv. And to this day, people celebrate June 4th, one month before Independence Day. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, June's Pride Month and nothing else, then to that I say, fuck you. Um, nobody cares about Pride Month. Not anybody with a spiritual connection to the creator and all things divine. 
Imagine being the kind of person that at the end of May is like, oh, can't wait for Pride Month. Boy, would I never want to sit down and have a conversation with that person. But that's not what this is about. This is about heroism. That's what this episode's about, about inspiring people. If you're a guy listening to this, are you inspiring the guys in your life, the gals in your life? Gals, are you inspiring other gals? Are you inspiring guys? Are you inspiring children? Youth? We have some youth listeners on the Darby cast. A couple high schoolers, I would imagine. And a score of high-integrity college students. I don't think we're really getting into the middle school community. I think a lot of the analysis and high-level storytelling of the Darby cast would probably be lost on most people in middle school, except probably a couple rare individuals. And boy, I hope there are some young fellas or ladies that listen to the Darby cast religiously and then relay the messages to all of their classmates. Now it's a Monday morning. The teacher says, hey, what did everybody do with their weekend? And then little Billy Turner just shoots up his hand and he's like, I listened to the Darby cast and Fauci's a fucking goblin. And then half the class is like, no. And then the other half's like, damn right he is. We live in a divided country is what I'm trying to say. Wait a second, Kyle. I said the bulldozer was 50 tons. It was actually 85 tons. And so the legend of Marv Hemeyer continues to grow. Not just in a physical sense, but in its ability to inspire us to say, back off. Bureaucrats and people trying to strangle small business owners at every turn, thwart what they're doing. I hope Billy Turner has a couple sleepovers at kids' houses where the other parents have conflicting ideology, and I hope he slaps them and treats them super wrong and that they don't reprimand him because they're like, wow, this kid is our intellectual superior, and he's right about everything. He's just smoking a cigarette, and he's like, hey, Katrina, doesn't even call his friend's mom Mrs. McGillicuddy. He's just like, hey, Katrina, what's your body count at? You seem so loose. And Billy Turner's not wrong. Most moms named Katrina, yuck. However, let's talk about inspiration and heroism because that's really what this episode's about. It's about connection. It's about belonging. Marv Hemeyer was meant to feel as though he didn't belong by his local government, no less. That is not the role of government. I tell you what, to alienate the citizenry, especially the high integrity citizens who are installing and modifying mufflers. Do not mess with those guys. They are the lifeblood of any city, any town. Do you belong to any groups? Why don't you just take a pause and think to yourself, do I belong to any groups, formal or informal? Do I go to church? Do I belong to a local softball league where we're in a co-ed style situation where my friends and I are non-verbally seducing all the gals on our roster and other rosters as well with our imposing physicality? Are you taking charge of the organizations in which you find yourself, verbally or non-verbally? Do you walk into a room and everybody says, all right, all the BS has to stop. Jackson Turner the third, father of Billy Turner, just walked in and he can't stand masking up because he knows it was BS the whole time. It was symbolic capitulation to a malevolent regime. And Jackson Turner the third answers to no one but God. Get fucked, AutoZone corporate. Jackson Turner the third not standing for it, and Marv Hemeyer, rest in peace. Boy, would he not be a fan of AutoZone. Or Jiffy Lube. You wouldn't be a fan of Jiffy Lube, not one bit. Support small business is another message that I'm trying to convey today. Right, Kyle? Kyle, we are a small business. Did you know that? You did. Good job. But we're not all Marv Hemeyer. 
In fact, if you're listening to this podcast, chances are you're a bit of an intellectual. Cat's out of the bag. What? Emeyer? Hemeyer? Emeyer? Am I saying that right, Kyle? What he did isn't for everybody. And I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and weld steel and concrete to a bulldozer and start demolishing government buildings. I'm not saying that. If you wanted to do that, I can't stop you, but I'm not going to endorse that fully, only partially. What does it mean to be a hero in today's day and age? It means living deliberately and not taking crap from people who hate you. Do you listen to people's opinions about you who hate you? Because if you're still doing that, that's not a good call. Surprise, surprise, people who don't like you are probably going to try to make you feel like garbage and also describe all the things that you do as not okay. This shouldn't come as news to you. But sometimes it's nice to have a refresher that there are, in fact, uh, enemies out in the world and they hate you. They want you dead. So what does heroism really look like? It might just be putting an arm around somebody this holiday season. And I know that's a ways away, but you might have to emotionally prepare yourself for that. Were you excluded from Thanksgiving dinner for the past year or two? Christmas for the past year or two? Did people demand that you get vaccinated or that you had to exit their life completely? And then you said your terms are acceptable. And now as news comes back full circle and they start to become aware of the things that you've known for over two years because you are a listener of the Darby cast and they say, gosh, I really didn't get it right. But in my defense, I will say I was scared. And then you take them aside and you say, the fact that you're so unprincipled that fear, which is like something that happens to everybody um, from time to time, the fact that fear got you into a place of dismissiveness or murderous rage in some cases, you are an unimpressive individual. You're not very sturdy when it comes to the spine department. But here's where some heroism can come into that situation. Here's where you bring a little JC into the situation. Our Lord and Savior, have you heard of him? Big on forgiveness. You say, Hey, I forgive you for being a total coward and compromising on everything about the way you operated. However, I am not going to listen to you and take a lot of the stuff that you say seriously ever. You lost that right pretty much from here on out. You demonized me for having principled opposition to extreme tyranny and therefore You revealed to me, what? Your character and your heart. And although I forgive you, trust is not the bridge that I will be rebuilding. I have other roads to pave towards good books and healthy relationships with attractive people who make sense when they talk. And that's a fair thing to say. Being a hero doesn't mean being an apologetic pussy who says, oh, well, nobody knew. I just made one decision, you made another. It's like, no, the people who are really raw, raw uh, government and big industry, I've never heard more psychopathic, murderous fantasies and authoritarian power daydreams out of individuals in my entire life. And I'm going to need a hell of an apology to get things back to neutral. I find that stance heroic, where you say, sorry, I have to maintain a sense of self-respect in operating with you, who you have none. So I'm going to inspire you by showing you that you can't just be a piece of garbage who's hysterical and paranoid and then expect everybody to say, sorry, You were so scared. Yeah, let's let bygones be bygones. I know you wanted to round me up and put me in uh, some kind of extermination camp. But yeah, the Republicans are the Nazis for sure. 
good job. You understand things in a big way. But let's talk about Marv Meyer for a second. He Meyer. I want to say it right. Do this guy justice. He went a little too hard, if we're being honest. But he felt like he didn't have a choice. And circumstances in his life were not nearly as sideways as they are now. So what are your subtle acts of rebellion? Because he went a little too theatrical. I don't think a guy who's running a muffler shop was a theater buff. But then again, stranger things have crossed my perceptions in today's day and age. Example A, Fauci. How is that dude still around? How has he not been eaten by a pack of wild alligators? Quote unquote, as an accident. I'm not calling for it. I'm just wondering how it hasn't happened yet. Before this episode, I read an article about some dope's perception of the bulldozer rampage. Now let's take a time out. How did I find this video in the first place? How did I find this story? There was a time before content aggregation sites and powerful search engines, but YouTube still existed. And so there was a need to be filled. And what's that? Creative people skilled in the art of language who could punch in words and find great videos. I'm talking terms like crazy octopus and you guessed it, bulldozer rampage. I used to do that in college. My friends, they would get really wasted and I can't say I wasn't a part of that, but I would say punch in the term bulldozer rampage. Let's see what happens here. And then I just came across it. This was not served to me. I sought it out. And anybody who's listening to this can really appreciate the love of learning and stepping to the beat of your own drum as well as self-guided education. If you haven't heard this story before, gosh, am I glad to break the news to you about a patriot. 85-ton bulldozer? Amazing. But there are more than a handful of articles written by cowards who are like, he was so out of line. And it's like, no, no, he wasn't. Checkmate. This happened in 2004, 18 years ago. Kyle, right? But as discussed earlier in this episode, what if Marv were around in today's day and age and he saw all the stuff going down? He had spidey senses that detected tyranny. And boy, would he have been on absolute overload if he were witnessing all of the nonsense going on. If somebody disinvited him to a Thanksgiving, he wouldn't have even cared because he would have said, eyes on the prize. This isn't about you, you fucking Thanksgiving coward. This is about the people in power who are weaponizing propaganda and language against you, making moralizing statements and saying fear and compliance are the virtues worth pursuing. The spirit of Marv lives in anybody who's heard the story. So now you have a little bit of killdozer in you. What are you going to do with that now? Hopefully not property damage. That is so left wing these days. Like arson and murder, looting. Very left wing things to do. Tell you what's right wing though principled opposition and saying, this is my line in the sand. And if you cross it, consequences will be enacted. And that's fair. Okay. Anybody who's saying like, no, you just got to lay down and get cornholed at every turn. That's not what leaders say. Okay. Notice conservatives in the federal government, how they're like, well, okay, but like, take it easy. That's what they say whenever tyranny is rearing its head. For the most part, there are a few rare individuals who are putting on a halfway decent show. I don't trust any politicians. I'm going to go ahead and say that. Don't expect Ron DeSantis to save the day. He seems pretty good, right? The optics of what he's been pulling off recently seems good. But that doesn't mean he is... The end all be all. He's no Marv Hemeyer. Gosh, I'd put together a presidential campaign for Hemeyer if he were still around. 
and say, Marv, let's run on the campaign slogan, cut it out or your buildings are going to be leveled. Where's that been? I'll tell you where it's been. In the grave. Since 2004. But as heroes, it may be time for us to spread stories about heroes. You invite somebody into a conversation today. And you say, would you mind if I told you about something heroic? And anybody who says no to that, just know that they're a coward and a piece of garbage. And then you move on to the next person. You say, would you be comfortable if I inspired you right now with a tale of heroism? And the correct kind of people are going to say, good Lord, I've been waiting so long for somebody to approach me with that kind of enthusiasm. Who are you? Who do you know? Actually answer those questions later. It's story time. That's what they're going to say to you. But let's talk about if Marv E. Meyer were around for the COVID measures, what the bulldozer rampage would have looked like. He would have found a way to get a tank, a big tank, one that is not really available to the public. He would have hijacked a tank from a military base, and then he would have souped it up with a muffler, the likes of which would inspire anyone. Be like, whoa, is that thing custom? Certainly doesn't look industry standard to me at all. How good would that feel to have a muffler that started conversations? That's what Marv was producing, and that's what the government couldn't stand. They hated his creativity. They hated his rebellion that existed in his creative spirit. And I think we all know that people who hate the creative simply admire it, but are too unsophisticated and talentless to express anything creative themselves. Therefore, they're jealous, vindictive, and inappropriate. But Marv Hemeyer would have had a tank. It probably would have had a custom paint job, maybe even a wrap, maybe some Punisher logos on it. I'm not a big fan of cape shit. I reference some pop culture things from time to time, like Marvel stuff or DC Comics, maybe Harry Potter, Star Wars, simply because people can relate to it. It's not my cup of tea, though. That being said, can you imagine a tank with a couple Punisher logos on it? Pretty intimidating. Rigged with some speakers, just playing the song um, So Far Away by Stained on repeat, or maybe the song It's Been a While by Stained. That's it, right? Like he would play a stained CD physical disc on repeat. Now then we're here. That would be a rallying cry that would make ineffective government workers startled. They would not know. They'd be like, oh gosh, I've been screwing up in a huge way. Maybe mix in a couple Depeche Mode songs. Have you ever heard the song Everything Counts, Kyle? Can I count on you to link that in the description of the episode? So far we have Bulldozer Rampage link, and then we're going to need uh, Everything Counts by Depeche Mode. Really important message. Super tank with speakers, cool muffler, Punisher rap job. He definitely set up some kind of uh, Traeger grill meat smoking station inside so he could enjoy some brisket. Perfectly cooked. I don't know if Traeger's a real right-leaning company, but they are pro-meat. And if there's one thing we know about lefties these days, boy, do they enjoy veggies and crickets in salads. And that's it. So Traeger's doing something right. What else would Marv's tank have? A control station for a drone that would provide aerial support because why wouldn't it? Where would Marv take this drone? A lot of places is the answer to that. Telecommunication companies, media outlets, government buildings. And I think they would have to surrender. All of them. Just lay down and be like, Marv, don't, um, we messed up. 
That's the only thing these tyrants understand, right? Listen, I orient us around truth during these DarbyCast episodes, but the only language that criminals, traitors, and tyrants understand is the kind that Marv's dishing out from time to time. I am not a believer in resurrection science other than that of JC. I feel like if people tried to do it instead of God, that turns into a weird science experiment, the likes of which doesn't yield a robotic hot chick, like in the movie Weird Science, with the theme song created by the band Oingo Boingo, from my heart and from my head. Right, Kyle? But sometimes you resurrect somebody in your heart, in your spirit. And again, I'm not saying to go hijack some construction equipment and start joyriding in it. That is not it. But you'll know when the spirit of Marv has risen because you're going to see something on the news and you're going to be like, Marv is indwelling that guy or that lady. How terrifying would that be? A hot chick? Patriot, who was so tired of red tape and regulations, and she was just like, it's over. I have a tank. She mixes up the tank look from the one I've described, puts a logo on the side instead of the Punisher. It just says, save by the bell. She looks an awful lot like Kelly Kapowski. She's playing Motley Crue, still on a CD. He's not into digital media. He's the one they call Dr. Feel Good. He's the one to make you feel all right. Kyle, when was the last time you listened to some crew? Kyle, because I don't think many people are listening to Motley Crew nearly enough. Link it in the bio if you would, Kyle, or the episode description. I don't know. You handle these things. I'm just here hitting the mic hard. But for most of us, our acts of rebellion are going to be more subtle. Our acts of heroism and inspiration are going to be telling the truth, telling somebody to have a seat, and maybe not even giving them a pep talk. Just tell them, why don't you go ahead and have a seat? And then you walk away. Say, take a couple plays off. You have been consistently wrong about everything. That's kind of what you say to a rank-and-file minion, one of the people who have been running the plays that have been dictated to them and haven't ever taken a time out to be like, wait, am I a total boner? Are the people who are mandating that everyone take experimental medicine and hate themselves and the country and our history and our entire way of life, hate Christianity, things like that, are they the good guys? Sometimes people will have a good think if you just simply ask them to have a seat. These are the kind of people that when they were kids and they were told to have a time out, they fucking did it. They didn't even wander off. When they were told to sit on a chair, they didn't look at the authority source and say, I'm just going to get off the chair. Like, what are we even doing here? If you tell somebody to sit down in a chair and think about what they've done, if they're a lefty, they're going to have to do it because they're compliant. All you need to do to change a lefty's mind is speak with authority in your voice and say things two or three times. Repetition is kind of a big key when it relates to propaganda. You'll notice that certain messages get bombed into the consciousness of the American public. We're all in this together. Two weeks to flatten the curve. Diversity is our strength. The planet's going to explode because of global warming. Joe Biden is so smart. Kamala Harris isn't a crazy person. They say these things often to drill it into your mind. But if you're having a conversation with a lefty that is not tank oriented or bulldozer, you say, have a seat. And they say, no. And you say, have a seat. And then they're like, okay, all you have to do is repeat things. And you say, you've been acting pretty nuts lately. You kind of address them like a child. You've been acting pretty nuts lately. You're kind of an insane person. They say, no, I'm not. You're crazy. And it's like, no, you're crazy. And they're like, no, you're crazy. And then you just say it the third time. You're like, you're 
an insane person. You're crazy. And they're like, oh, no. And what comes after that? Growth. Rewriting the script. A new lease on life. That is heroism. Okay. What did Marv do for his town? I bet you that is one of the most high-functioning cities in the country at this point because somebody had the balls or the ovaries in case that you're a chick listening to this to be bold, to say, hey, Milton Buttersworth, mayor of some city, fuck you. People are too focused on the national stage. And I'm going to raise my hand and say I'm one of them. Local stuff matters. And that's why we can look at a guy like Marv and say, think global, act local. This guy was Greenpeace through and through. He knew what was really going on. He would have flipped out in the years after 9-11, when the surveillance state ramped up, when the Patriot Act was authored by Michael Chertoff, who now runs a private security company that makes those body scanners at the airport. Look him up. He's a bad dude. But I think that's going to wrap it up. And if I've left any loose ends, you fill them in yourself. I trust you. You have a big imagination and you're a great person. If you made it this far in the episode and you're new, welcome aboard. You're going to stick around. Go back in the catalog. Enjoy yourself. Each episode is an adventure. And boy, are they wildly inconsistent in tone, message, and delivery. However. That's what people have come to know and love about this podcast. So if you're new, either get the fuck out of here or stick around. Do what's right in your heart.